Hello! In this video, we're going to show you how to ligate two fragments of DNA together when you're trying to ligate a new gene into an old plasmid. Let's begin by discussing the reaction mechanism for ligation. First of all, any ligation reaction requires a ligase enzyme, ATP, and some DNA fragments. Ideally, the DNA fragments should have sticky ends. Sticky ends will greatly accelerate the rate of this reaction. It is possible to ligate fragments with blunt ends, but the reaction can take up to 10 times as long. Either way, the first step in ligation is for the ligase enzyme to form an intermediate complex with ATP by cleaving off two of the phosphates. The enzyme then transfers the AMP to a hydroxyl group on the phosphodiester backbone. This makes that hydroxyl group vulnerable to attack by the phosphate group on the other DNA fragment. Once that phosphate group attacks, the AMP falls off and we have a sealed phosphodiester backbone on one of the DNA strands. The other strand of the double helix will have to be repaired in a subsequent reaction. So you can see here that ATP is a key component of this reaction. Without ATP, no ligation will occur. There are also two main steps in this process. You have an initial annealing step where the strands find each other and form hydrogen bonds. Then we have this enzymatic reaction with our ligase that permanently seals the phosphodiester bond. Both of these steps must occur in a successful ligation reaction. Unfortunately though, they're favored at different temperatures. The initial annealing step is favored at low temperatures. That's where hydrogen bonds are the most stable. But at this low temperature, the ligase enzyme is very slow. Instead, the ligase enzyme prefers to work at 25 degrees C. Obviously, a higher temperature is going to favor enzyme activity. But at this higher temperature, your hydrogen bonds might be less stable. So we have this clash in optimum temperatures between the annealing step and the ligation step. And this gives us a few different options. You can choose to run the reaction at 4 degrees C, but give it a lot more time. Or you can run the reaction at 25 C for a shorter amount of time and anticipate having a slightly slower yield. However, most people just compromise between the two temperatures, find an average somewhere around 16 C, and let the reaction run for an hour. This gives you the best of both worlds and usually gets a pretty good yield. All right, so now that you understand how ligation works, let's actually set up a ligation reaction. To do so, you need the following reagents. You're going to need the two fragments you want to ligate together, a ligation buffer containing ATP, and the T4 DNA ligase enzyme itself. Remember to keep the enzyme cold whenever possible. If you haven't already done so, you'll need to quantify the concentration of DNA in each sample. This is because ligation reactions work best when there's a 4 to 1 molar ratio of insert or gene DNA to backbone or plasmid DNA. So you'll either need to use a nano drop or a plate reader to quantify the DNA concentrations in each sample. Make sure you use a blank, such as water, that matches the solvent in each of your DNA samples. Once you have the backbone and insert DNA concentrations, we can use these values to estimate how much volume of each sample we should add to our ligation reaction to ensure that we have that 4 to 1 molar ratio of insert to backbone DNA. You'll also need the number of base pairs in each fragment. You can find these values by looking up the sequences of your plasmid and your gene, or you can just roughly estimate them. You'll also need a molar ratio of insert to backbone DNA. We're probably going to use four, but there's some other options we can discuss later. Once you define all these variables though, you can calculate the volume of backbone and insert DNA to add to the ligation reaction using the equations shown on the right. But first, let's discuss a few guidelines for these variables. Uh, first of all, for your molar ratio of insert to backbone, uh, we're going to use 4 today, but you can use anything between 4 to 10. Uh, going any lower than this will significantly decrease your yield, but it might still work. Also, the concentration in each DNA sample should be approximately 2 to 10 nanograms per microliter. If your concentration if your DNA concentrations are lower than 2 nanogram per microliter, then it's pretty unlikely that your ligation will work. If your concentrations are higher than 10 nanogram per microliter, then that might be simply too much work for the enzyme, and you'll end up with a lot of partially ligated plasmids, which is not ideal. 
But remember, if your DNA concentration is too high, it's pretty easy to dilute it down with water. Finally, if you look at the equations on the right, you'll notice we also need a total DNA volume. In the reaction we're performing today, we're going to use a total DNA volume, that's backbone and insert mixed together, of 16 microliters. This is pretty common. You don't need very much, but you can definitely go up or down from here as you wish. So once you've defined R and modified your concentrations as necessary, you can calculate VI and VB using these equations right here. To illustrate how this is done, let's walk through a quick example. Let's say you quantify your DNA concentrations and you have 6 nanogram per microliter of backbone and 8 nanogram per microliter of insert DNA. The plasma backbone is 5250 base pairs long and the insert is 750 base pairs long. And we're going to stick with a 16 microliter total DNA volume. If we plug and chug all these values into our equation for insert volume, we get a value of 4.8 microliters. Notice here that I'm using a 4 to 1 molar ratio, so R is equal to 4. To obtain the volume of backbone DNA, I simply take 16 and subtract the insert volume. So here I get 11.2 microliters. So in this reaction, I'll be taking 4.8 microliters of insert DNA, 11.2 microliters of backbone DNA, and then I'll need to add my ligase buffer and ligase enzyme. In this reaction, I'm going to add 2 microliters of DNA ligase buffer, since it's supplied in a 10x concentration, and 2 microliters of T4 DNA ligase enzyme. And there you have it. Now we have the recipe for our reaction. Let's go ahead and set it up. Begin by mixing your insert and backbone DNA samples. For example, if you obtain the values shown in the previous example, you would be mixing 4.8 microliters of insert and 11.2 microliters of backbone DNA. Next, add 2 microliters of the T4 ligase enzyme buffer. And finally, add 2 microliters of the enzyme itself. Please, once you're finished with the enzyme and buffer, put them back in the freezer as soon as possible. Once your samples are well mixed, you'll need to incubate the reaction. If this is the last thing you're doing during the day, throw it in the fridge and let it sit overnight. If you're in more of a hurry, you can transfer your reaction to a PCR tube and incubate it at 16C for 45 minutes in the thermal cycler. Finally, if you're feeling lucky, just leave the tube out at room temperature for about 30 minutes. Any one of these incubation strategies may work. However, if this is the first time you're doing this, you might want to split the sample up and try all the different incubation temperatures and see what works best for your reaction. Either way, once your incubation step is complete, you're ready to proceed to transformation, where we're going to use this ligated DNA to transform some E. coli bacteria.